Hello, very good morning to all. I'm Kelvin here again, the Senior Market Analyst of Oenda Asia Pacific. Welcome to today's Daily Dose of Market Insights by Oenda. Today will be Tuesday, the 27th of February, 2024. All right, so before we start our Daily Dose of Market Insights, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. All right, leverage trading carries a high degree of risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Losses could exit deposits. This presentation is not an offer or solicitation to buy or sell, no financial advice or recommendation for any investment product, as well as any forecast, prediction or projection in this presentation is not necessarily indicative of the future or likely performance of the product. This advertisement has not been reviewed by the MAS. All right, so before we jump straight into our usual short term technical outlook of the various broad based cost assets, let's have a recap overnight in the US session and as well as what are the key data points that has been released so far uh, before the start of our daily dose today. So in the US session overnight was rather a lukewarm session. We see a bit of uh, profit taking coming back into the major uh, mega cap technology stocks, especially with the underperformer Google. So later I'll share a story why, uh, because Google, uh, which is IE Alphabet, yesterday has a negative news flow where they uh, release uh, a, a, a media uh, 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 stating that uh, they're actually going to pause their AI uh, initiative uh, at this point in time. So that actually kind of created a midi a mini negative feedback loop into the Nasdaq 100. So the Nasdaq 100 uh, actually lost almost as negative 0.3%, but throughout the uh, US session, it managed to close unchanged at negative 0.02%. The SPX is down negative 0.38%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average also uh, down slightly negative 0.16%. And the only positive outlayer was the small caps, the Russell 2000, which managed to add a gain of a positive 0.61% at the close of yesterday's US session. Okay, and what we could see over here is that the dollar continued to weaken. Uh, the dollar index down negative 0.17%. Uh, but however, later I'll share with you on the heat map of the major pair, means the dollar versus the rest of the major pair. Primary, yesterday's uh, dollar weakness or, or dollar strength that being kind of kept on the upside is being more or driven by the euro dollar and the sterling dollar. But however, the rest of other the major currency like the Aussie, the Kiwi uh, remains uh, pretty much of a softer footing against the dollar. And for sure, the the XAU slash USD spot gold yesterday do see a bit of a minor pullback right below this uh, symmetrical triangle range resistance at 2042, but still managed to hold above our short term pivotal support that we mentioned yesterday, which is at around 2020 level mark. And the West Texas oil also managed to actually uh, inch up slightly higher after uh, having uh, 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 the out, its hourly RSI being uh, flirting around the extreme oversold level yesterday. So uh, West Texas Oil managed to stage a snapback rally uh, with a gain, positive gain of 1.31% by the end of yesterday US session, but still remains kept below a key symmetrical range resistance at 78, 40, 79 dollar uh, per barrel. Okay, so let me share with you what happened uh, overnight in the US market uh, by looking at this heat map on my screen over here. So if you look at the heat map on my screen, uh, what we could see over here is a rather last uh, session by the mega cap stocks. The seven, uh, we talk about the mega cap technology stocks, okay, with the worst performing was Google that I mentioned earlier, down negative 4.5%. Uh, so uh, the, what I call it, the weakness in Google were managed to offset in the semiconductor space, especially NVIDIA still remains uh, rather positive after yesterday's uh, slightly gaining slightly at 0.35%, uh, but the, almost the rest of the semiconductor sector uh, was more on the positive than negative uh, side of the story in terms of yesterday's intraday performance. So Google itself was actually uh, being triggered the weakness of Google yesterday was being triggered by this negative uh, news flow, where actually they decided to drop uh, this, uh, 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 we call it a uh, pause 
of its AI feature, which is Germany. So we all know that uh, Google right now, its so-called uh, AI initiative is being branded as this uh, Germany. So that is something in competition with ChatGPT. So what they do over here is that this news flow, I did mention that Google decided to actually uh, uh, put a pause in their this so-called uh, uh, ongoing in uh, Germany, uh, German Germany, pardon me, Germany. Uh, AI uh, 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 driven uh, initiative, uh, that means i.e. pause of their AI product in terms of experimentation. So that actually give rise to this uh, negative uh, share price performance in Google that spread throughout the rest of the, the other mega cap technology stocks over here. So, but the one that is managed to ho holding the fort will be Nvidia, okay? So, uh, but not, uh, to, to me later I'll share with the short term technical outlook right on the major on the benchmark US stock indices to me in terms of a technical analysis perspective the short term uptrend still remains uh, intact despite uh, yesterday's uh, Google negative uh, news flow okay then on top of this right one more uh, important event I'll share with you all that took shape uh, today this morning early this morning at 7 30 a.m singapore time will be the release of japan inflation rate data uh, which is pretty key why because uh number one boj is also bank of japan is actually right now uh started to give more firmer policy guidance uh during uh at, during the pri its prior monetary policy meeting in january uh, during the press conference, uh, BOJ Governor Yuda has really uh, stated very clearly BOJ is on site to actually remove uh, short-term negative interest rates. So to remove short-term negative interest rate, BOJ did mention that they got to actually see a firmer inflation rate. But this firmer inflation rate, bear in mind, in Japan, we have the core inflation rate and the core core inflation rate. So the core inflation rate is only uh, excluding, I think, food, that we need to take a close light watch on the inflation rate excluding food and energy. That means we remove off the cost push component and remain with the demand pool component, which is very important. But why demand pool is important? Because the demand pool component, if it managed to be remains resilient and firm, it means that IE is related to robust consumer spending. So uh, if you look at this inflation rate, X food and energy year on year, so uh, this 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 uh, 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 component of itself, it came in 3.5% slightly two basis point below 3.7 percent year on year but it still managed to remain above consensus forecast of 3.2 percent okay so if you look at the trend okay of it okay yes even though it's inching down slowly but it still uh, 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 kind of remains above that 2% target, okay? And even the consensus forecast, uh, the current one at 3.5% managed to beat the consensus forecast of 3.2%. So that is, is, is actually positive in terms of uh, in the inflationary front for Japan. That means, i.e. more or less, we are now not returning to that uh, fearful, what I call it, a sticky deflationary environment. And that could also be in the longer term, positive for the Japanese economy. That means, i.e. there'll be much more confidence in consumer uh, as well as businesses to actually ramp up their spending plans. Uh, this provided that the global uh, economy doesn't slip into recession, primarily the US, and as well as uh, for BOJ to actually be more forceful this time around to normalize its short-term negative interest rate, uh, uh, we call it policy, that is the only central bank left in this world that has negative interest rates. Then. Indirectly, it could be also translate to a much more firmer uh, yen against the dollar. So uh, at the release of this uh, small, much bet better than expected inflation data, means X core core inflation data, X food and X energy for Japan in the month of January. <coughs> 
debt managers the dollar yen to actually slip from yesterday's US session high. So in the yesterday US session high, it managed to hit an intraday level at uh, 150.80. Uh, then right upon the release of this uh, positive uh, news flow for the Japanese yen, the dollar yen or the dollar actually weakened by I think close to about 25 pips against the uh, the yen. So the dollar yen now is actually trading around uh, 150, 55 level. Later we take a look short, take a look at the short term technical outlook chart with that. With that, bearing in mind the picture. So, with that, this is the key, uh, these are the key uh, events and data that took shape uh, yesterday and early this morning. Okay. <coughs> okay. Pardon me. Okay. Right now, let's take a look at the FX market first. Right. So, on the FX market over here, uh, let us start with the data point that I want to share with you. All. Okay. Over here. All right, so now let me expand my screen so that you guys could see much clearer. All right, so right now what we could see over here is this is the five day rolling performance, a very short term rolling performance of the dollar against the major currency. So what it means that is dollar is the base currency versus the rest of other currency. That means dollar against Aussie, dollar against Kiwi, dollar against Sing, dollar against Swiss franc, dollar against Euro and Sterling. So what you could see over here is that uh, the dollar weakness or dollar strength being kept is pretty much driven by the European currency. So what I could see over here is that dollar is the weakest against the euro and the sterling from a five-day rolling performance basis. But however, uh, dollar is actually gaining strength against the Aussie dollar that is also dragging up the Kiwi dollar as well. And due to the very strong, uh, not strong, uh, due to the, the better than expected Japan inflationary data, that is the core core inflation rate, excluding fresh food and energy, we see the dollar strength giving back against the yen at the start of today's Asia session. All right, over here, you see this downward sloping line. So overall, what we could see is that the current short term uh, picture on the FX market is rather uh, mixed at this point in time. That means, i.e. there is uh, no clear signs of what I call uh, dollar strength, no dollar weakness uh, being depicted in the FX market. Okay, so uh, this, I, I believe that this is pretty much, uh, uh, we call it uh, sensible or, 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 or rational, given the fact that we, we do have that uh, key risk uh, data that is coming into this coming uh, Thursday, which is the all important uh, US core PCE data. So that is uh, the preferred inflationary data uh, that the U.S. Central uh, Bank monitored. So uh, right, I believe that right ahead of this uh, release of the core PC data, uh, most of the traders in the FX market uh, do not have a kind of a, a clear view or do not want to take aggressive uh, position, positioning, either net long or net short against the dollar right ahead of the release, before the release of this core PC data. And now, let us, since we're talking about the FX market right now, let us jump straight to the individual uh, short-term technical analysis on the various uh, major FX pairs. Okay, so let us start with the euro dollar first. So like I mentioned, euro dollar, the euro is the strongest against the dollar among the, the, the performance chart that I share with you all. So for sure, if you look at the euro dollar, yesterday managed to actually clear above last Friday minus swing high at 102. 10840 level, 10840 level. So with that right, we will have a much more slightly tightened key short-term pivotal support for today, uh, which was last Thursday minor swing low area, which is uh, just the, just right below this uh, minor ascending trend line support, uh, minor ascending channel support, and the 200-day moving average. I think a support at 1.0824, slightly below it, uh, 1.0810. So I use 1.0810 as my tightened key short-term pivotal support for today to maintain this uh, bullish, short-term bullish outlook on the euro dollar. First resistance to watch for sure will be the 50-day moving average. I think closely at the resistance on last Thursday minus swing high at 1.0890. Uh, after 1.0890, uh, potentially we may uh, see the next intermediate resistance zone coming in at 1.0935 slash 1.0950, which is the FIBO extension cluster level, as well as the upper limit of this minor ascending channel and previously this uh, former minor congestion area of 10 Jan to 16 of January. Only hourly close below 1.0810 
will uh, invalidate this short-term bullish bias to see another round of a uh, correct minor corrective decline towards uh, to expose the next uh, near-term support zone of 1.08, 1.0785, 1.0760 uh, level. Okay, sterling dollar. Okay, which is the pound. So the pound uh, traded sideways. So uh, it's not as strong as the euro dollar. Why? Because it managed to be held uh, right below uh, last Friday's swing high area, which is pretty much for sure. This is the minor range resistance at 1.27 figure level. Okay, so it didn't surpass last Friday's swing high, uh, which is now being a, uh, a transformed into a minor range resistance at 1.27 figure level. So with the near term support level right now at 1.2656. Okay, so I don't want to use 1.2656 as a short term pivotal support level. Uh, so I will still use a 1.2610. Okay, 1.2610 over here which is pretty much very clear. This is the much more uh, minor V-shaped recovery. Okay, this V-shape, a pretty deep V-shaped recovery that was formed on last Thursday. So this give us a much more uh, significant uh, level uh, in terms of the sentiment and as being depicted by the V-shaped recovery, which is at one point, the low of the V-shaped recovery is which, which is 1.2610. So uh, as long as any potential pullback managed to hold above 1.2610, short-term pivotal support will still maintain that uh, short-term bullish outlook above 1.27 figure level uh, exposes the next intermediate resistance zone at 1.2740, 1.2760 level over here, which is this um, range top from 15th of Jan to 2nd of February. Only an hourly close below 1.2610 will invalidate this uh, short-term bearish out bullish outlook, pardon me, uh, invalidate the short-term bullish outlook to see the extension of the minor corrective decline to test the next intermediate uh, support zone at 1.2540, 1.25 figure level. Okay, then let's take a look at the dollar yen. So dollar yen, what you could see yesterday, there's a bit of, uh, we call it excess at the 150.70 short term pivotal resistance that we have since last week. So uh, I put a bit of excess at 150.80 for today. And this excess over here, right, this, this kind of a higher, minor higher high, is not being confirmed by its momentum indicator, which is the hourly RSI. So you look at the hourly RSI, it actually shaped a lower high instead. Okay, a lower high. So previously there was this 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 high, slightly higher than this high, but the RSI managed to shape a lower high, right at the overbought, uh, slightly below the overbought zone over here, indicating to us that yesterday's push up, uh, upside momentum has starts to ease off, and we've also the bearish breakdown of the former. Uh, ascending trend line support on the RSI that is in place since 21st of February over here. What we could see this line here just broke down today. So this is what I call a momentum break right after a bearish divergence condition that's being flashed up. So these two bearish element that's been depicted on its momentum reading. So pretty much indicate to us that there is a, a, a we call it a high probability that yesterday's push up is more like a, uh, a, a, a move that has started to lose its upside momentum. And the next step is for it to actually do a bit of consolidation at this point in time. So with that over here, uh, we'll still maintain that short term bearish uh, outlook on the dollar yen within this kind of range configuration that is in place since 14th of February. So the first support level to watch, right? Uh, because given that this is a short term intraday uh, a, a technical uh, outlook, Okay, will be this level here. Okay, this congestion area, okay, which correspond to last Thursday minor swing low as well at 150, 1505 level. Okay, 1505, put it properly. Okay, 1.05 level. Uh, below 1.05 level uh, exposes this uh, important uh, minor range support level that is in place uh, since the low of 15th of February at 14960. We also now correspond to the 20 day moving average acting as a support level very closely at this support level as well at 14960. All right, so uh, so it's like kind of a bearish bias within this uh, within this kind of range configuration that the dollar yen is actually trading right now.
uh, only an hourly close above 15080 uh, level will invalidate these uh, bearish buyers within its range configuration to see a potential squeeze up to test the major resistance zone at 15140 slash 15195 level okay so net net uh, overall still maintain that short-term bearish outlook within its range configuration for the dollar yen then how about the aussie dollar so aussie dollar is one of the uh, weaker pair against the dollar uh, okay so what we could see over here is that there is no news catalyst that is coming out so it's more like momentum and positioning driven so uh, what we have over here is that previously we have that 6540 as a short-term uh, pivotal support level looking for a rebound to take shape around towards the 65.80 level in first step. However, price action going to break down below 65.40 in yesterday's US session. And in today's Asia session, it managed to retest it, recapture it, but failed to actually close above it and traded much lower at this point in time as we speak. So with that, right, it seems to us that the Aussie dollar right now is actually shaping another leg of minor corrective decline to retrace this previous minor uh, up move from the low of 14 of February to 22nd of February over here. So with that, right, uh, we'll be using the 200 day moving average right now is also acting as a resistance that also correspond to uh, yesterday's uh, US session high at 65.60 level, All right? So 65.60 will be my short-term pivotal resistance to flip to a short-term bearish bias for today uh, to potentially uh, the Aussie dollar may unfold a retracement uh, to retrace the previous uh, minor uh, up move uh, towards the golden ratio at 61.8 maximum 76.4 FIBO retracement of the previous uh, minor uh, up movement from the low of 14 of February to 22nd of February. So this 65 figure level also uh, pretty much important why it's psychological and as well as a graphical support zone as well other than the golden ratio of 61.8. Graphical support zone pretty much see over here minor swing high retested by the minor swing low on 16 of Feb before that up move extends uh, to print a high of to, to print a 22nd of every high at around uh, this uh, 65 uh, 95 level okay so as long as 65 60 short term pivotal support pivotal resistance hold for now okay 65 60 short term pivotal resistance that we have holds for now uh, we will flip to a short term bearish bias to see the further retracement of the Aussie dollar towards the next near term support level at 65 figure below it exposes 65 64.70 only an hourly close back above 65.60 will uh, start to see the, the, the resurgence of a potential minor recovery coming back into the Aussie dollar uh, to test in first step the first uh, near term resistance will be 65.80 above 65.80 exposes the next resistance at 66.20 we also correspond to the 50-day moving average I think as a resistance as well so 66.20 is the pretty much clear uh, medium term resistance uh, level range resistance that is in place since 24th of Jan to 31st of Jan okay so IE overall the uh, overall the, the, the FX story in the short term is still pretty much mixed that means there is a neither a clear dollar strength or clear dollar weakness uh, on the aggregate uh, basis, all right? On the short-term basis, short-term aggregate basis, pardon me. Uh, now, let's also, let us move on to the major uh, stock indices, starting from the Asia uh, uh, indices. So for the Asia indices, the Japan 225, still recall that uh, we are still or the Nikkei 225, we still have that bullish bias in any potential pullback as long as this pullback managed to hold above the 38,850 short-term pivotal support level. So what you could see over here is that since last Friday, all-time high at 39,510, 39,600 level, price action going to shape that pullback uh, consolidation mode. So this pullback cons consolidation mode so far managed to hold above the 38,850 short-term pivotal support level. So still no change, still maintain that short-term bullish outlook on the Japan 225 using 38,850 short-term pivotal support to maintain this uh, positive outlook. First resistance to watch for sure will be at that 39,600 level. Above 39,600 level exposes the next uh, near-term resistance at 40,090. Only an hourly close be 
below 38,850 will uh, negate this short-term bullish outlook to see the extension of this uh, minor corrective uh, pullback to test the next support level at 38,450 slash 38,100 level. We also correspond to the minor swing low of last Friday, last Wednesday, pardon me, last Wednesday. Then uh, Hang Seng or the Hong Kong 33 index. So the Hong Kong 33 index, uh, like we mentioned yesterday, we also do expect a bit of minor pullback to take shape, given the fact that the price action has really hit the first resistance at 16,768 slash 860 yesterday. So the pullback in the take shape. So as long as the pullback managed to hold above this short-term pivotal support that we defined yesterday, which is at 16,350, we will still maintain that short-term bullish outlook. And what's interesting over here is that uh, that pullback takes shape uh, right now at, at, as we are speaking. Uh, what's interesting over here is that the RSI also managed to hit the oversold region already, okay? Hit the oversold region. So with that, as long as the pullback managed to hold above 16,350, we will still maintain that short-term bullish outlook. First resistance to watch for sure will be at 16,860. Above 16,860 uh, exposes the next near-term resistance zone at 17,010, 17,130, which is a confluence with the upper limit of the minor ascending channel that I drew from the low of the second of Jan, and as well as a FIBO extension cluster level as well. Okay, however, uh, hourly close below 16,350 will negate this ongoing counter short term minor counter trend rebound count short term minor counter trend rebound scenario to see the extension of this minor corrective pullback to uh, expose the next near term support zone at 16,140/15,950. We also confluence with the 20 day moving average and as well as the lower boundary of the minor ascending channel. That I drew from the low of 22nd of January. Okay, so net net overall, as long as 16,350 short term pivotal support holds in this ongoing potential minor pullback for the Hong Kong 33, we will still maintain that short term bullish outlook. German 30, European currency. Index. So European index, we also mentioned that it's in the midst of doing that minor corrective pullback where price action indeed uh, starts to actually turn softer right below the 17,470 17, predefined first resistance that we highlighted yesterday. So this potential pullback uh, may came close to this first near term support level at 17,290, which I highlighted yesterday as well. Uh, given the fact that uh, uh, the RSI hasn't even hit the oversold level yet, because right now it's just slightly below the 50 level mark, hasn't even hit the oversold level. So I don't want to type my short term pivotal so support level at 17,290. I'll still maintain it at 17,180. So as long as 17,180 short term pivotal support holds in any uh, potential uh, pullback, minor pullback that is unfolding right now for the German 30 index, we will still maintain that short term bullish outlook. For sure, first resistance will be at 17,470. Above 17,470, uh, sees the next uh, near intermediate resistance zone to come in at 17,590 slash 17,630. Only an hourly close below 17,180 will uh, negate this short term bullish tone to see the extension of the minor corrective pullback to uh, retest to expose or test the next uh, near term support level at the psychological level at 17,000 figure level. Also, the minor congestion area of 15th of February to 20th of February as well. Okay, this is 17 level over here. Now, U.S. Uh, stock indices, uh, let us start with the U.S. Wall Street 30. So no, no change for the U.S. Wall Street 30, continue to shape that uh, minor consolidation uh, since last Friday autumn high area at this uh, close to that 39,200 level. So with that, uh, using 38, still using 38,770 as my short-term pivotal support level, we also confluence very closely with this upward sloping 20-day moving average as well. So as long as any potential pullback managed to hold above 38,770, still maintain that short-term bullish outlook on the US Wall Street 30, 
first resistance to watch will be at 30, 39,400, followed by 39,610 level, which is confluence with the upper limit of this minor uh, ascending channel that I drew from the low of 18th of January 2024. Only hourly close below 38,770 will negate this bullish tone to see an extension of this minor corrective pullback to test the uh, last Thursday minor swing low area at 38,440-38,360 level. Now, what's next for the uh, Nasdaq 100? So Nasdaq 100, so no change, continue to consolidate uh, uh, below the 18,030 level. So yesterday, it managed to go up and test this level before shaping that minor pullback. And given that uh, it's still in a kind of a sideways or consolidation mode, I don't want to use uh, the 17,810 level as my short-term pivotal support level, given that it's still below the 18,030 level mark. So I'll be still using 17,650 just in case there may be a bit of minor uh, whipsaw below this 17,810 level. Okay, so using 17,650 as my short, still maintain using that as a short-term pivotal support level to maintain this uh, short-term bullish outlook on the NASDAQ 100. Above 18,030 uh, sees the next intermediate resistance coming in at 18,220 slash 18,270. Only hourly close below 17,650 will negate this bullish tone to see a kind of very uh, a choppy, a minor corrective decline scenario unfolding to retest last Thursday swing low area at 17,350, uh, which is coming close to the upward sloping 50 day moving average as well. Okay, so overall, uh, the major, you, the major stock indices that I shared with you earlier are still holding above their respective key short-term pivotal support and potentially we look still look to maintain their respective uh, short-term bullish outlook. Now, commodities market, let us start with uh, spot gold first. So spot gold XAU slash USD continue to move sideways uh, below the upper limit of this symmetrical range triangle configuration that is in place since the low of 13th of December and the upper limit of the symmetrical triangle range configuration that descending trend line that I drew from the 28th of December 23 high is around that 2042 level that was actually met last Friday. So I could see it's a bit of consolidation. Uh, the RSI, not too bad, it still managed to shape higher low, okay, over here higher low and right now managed to uh, hit back up above the 50 level mark. All right, so indicate to us that there's some signs of uh, short term upside momentum creeping back into the market by the elements, by these two positive elements that I share with you on the, our, the RSI. So with that, right, no change, I'll be still using that 2022 short term pivotal support that I highlighted yesterday as my key level to maintain that uh, short term bullish outlook. But for sure, price action got to break above 2042 uh, in order to see the next intermediate resistance zone to come in at 2059 slash 2064 over here, which is this uh, minor range resistance. Okay, that is in place since 5th of Jan to 2nd of February. All right, only an hourly close below 2022 level will invalidate this short term bullish outlook to see uh, another round of what I call a uh, choppy corrective declines, minor corrective decline scenario will be in this symmetrical triangle range configuration uh, to test the next support at 2011 and below 2011 exposes the next support at 1965 for Spock Now, uh, moving on will be oil. Uh, WTI crude oil over here. So let me see where's my oil price. Yeah, this oil. So oil over here, uh, yesterday we do expect a snapback rally, uh, given the fact that the RSI has really hit the oversold level. So right now, this RS, this snapback rally had lit the RSI back at its overbought zone, or overbought level, and the price action yesterday managed to actually uh, ease off right at the 200 day moving average as well, as you could see on my screen over here. And no change, uh, we will still use that 78.40, 79 short term pivotal resistance, which is the symmetrical triangle range uh, upper limit that I draw. Okay, over here that is in place since 15th of February 
last year. So uh, as long as 78, 40, 79 short term pivotal resistance not surpassed, we will still maintain that short term bearish bias on West Texas oil within this uh, symmetrical triangle range configuration. First support to watch for today will be 7620 slash 7575, which is also the 20 day moving average and as well as the support uh, swing low area of uh, yesterday's swing low area and last uh, 15th of February, the previous two Thursday swing low area as well. Only an hourly close above 79 figure level will invalidate the short term bearish bias to see a squeeze up to 79.80 and above 79.80 uh, exposes 81.65 resistance next. All right. So 81.65 is that former minor congestion area from 31st of October to 6th of November. All right, so that's pretty much sum up for the short term technical outlook on the share we offer today. So before we go, uh, let's take a look at the economic calendar to highlight what are the key important data to look out for for today. Okay, so uh, for today over here, we do have a uh, European session will be pretty much quiet. Uh, over at the US session, we do have one data point to watch out for, will be more of the uh, manufacturing side of the story, which is the dur durable goods order for January uh, coming in at 9.30 p.m. Singapore time. And after that, at 9.40 p.m. Singapore time, uh, BOE, which is the, the Bank of England, that's one official speaking, uh, BOE uh, Ramset, Ramdent, uh, speaking at 9.40 p.m. Singapore time. Then on top of that, uh, we do have uh, the U.S. Uh, 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 case Schiller Home Price uh, Index for the month of December. So that's pretty late, uh, not, not so important, but something to look out for at 10 p.m. Singapore time. And at 10.05, we do have one Fed official uh, speaking, uh, Fed bar speaking. And also at 11 p.m., we do have a uh, conference about consumer confidence data. So these are the key uh, data, uh, we call it events, uh, that potentially could uh, add a bit of volatility to the uh, global markets uh, heading into today's session. So with that, uh, that pretty much ends up today's daily dose of market insight. Do have a great day ahead. And uh, I shall speak with you all again tomorrow. Thank you.